Lambus and Glezos is a most unlikely detective, but the Greek-born retired art teacher from Melbourne has already solved one of our great military mysteries. In 2008, Lambus located 250 missing World War I diggers, killed in the horrific Battle of Fromelles in France. For the past four years, he's turned his formidable skill to Gallipoli, where the bodies of more than 3,000 Australian men were never recovered. And Lambus believes he's found another mass grave with Australian soldiers. But as Peter Stefanovic reports, our government doesn't want to know about it. We do have that moral obligation. If you can find your war dead, you've got to do it. It's not ancient history. It's very personal and very tangible. I believe we should. I believe we have a moral obligation to find and recover our war dead. And the name of this village? This is called Kojadere. Kojadere. Yeah. Lambus Inglesos and John Basarin are on a mission to find a lost piece of Australian history. He talks about shallow graves of few people, but he doesn't talk about these huge mass graves that... Uh, it hasn't been easy. I reckon that's where the dressing stations are down there. Yeah, yeah. But more than four years of complicated research has now brought them to this farmer's paddock, where they say at least 140 Australian soldiers missing for a century lie under our feet. I believe this is the area where the soldiers were buried, and I believe we should uh, investigate this ground. If you are correct, then we are standing on the mass graves of Australian diggers. Yes, on the bodies of fallen soldiers. This is a big thing. It is a very big thing. It's a huge thing. It's a little-known battle in the Gallipoli campaign which intrigues, even obsesses, Lambus and John. Two weeks after the landing at Anzac Cove, 3,000 Australians were sent south to the tip of the peninsula to reinforce British troops. It was a bloody battle for an insignificant village called Crithia and the high ground beyond it. But it should never have happened. What chance did they have? Well, they had no chance. It was a futile attack. The, the fighting was intense. The intent was very strong. They would take these Turkish lines, but they were well defended and it was an impossibility to get through the shrapnel fire, the machine gun fire. Was it arrogance or stupidity? Uh, I think a, a fatal mix of both. Author Patrick Lindsay has nothing nice to say about the English general, Alma Hunter Weston, who ordered the Aussies into the fight for Krithia on the 8th of May, 1915. It has been labelled as contemptuous of fate, wanton slaughter and criminal negligence. That about accurate? Yeah, I think so, because the, the, the commander, Hunter Weston, known as Hunter Bunter, a kind of a Bunter figure in many ways, did the same thing with no success about three or four times. Somehow, the Australian troops advanced about 800 metres through a wall of shrapnel and machine gun fire. Our diggers were mown down everywhere. And it was here, just beyond the Allied front lines, that was as far as they got. Now try to imagine, 100 years ago, bodies would have been scattered everywhere. Many of the wounded crying out for hours for the help that never came. Billy didn't have a chance. Didn't have a chance, no, none of them had a chance. Lance Corporal William Vernon Bowes was one of the soldiers who fell that day. His personal effects were eventually shipped home, but his body was never found. So, you know, up in Gallipoli in the mornings when uh, they had a bit of thing, this, he'd lather up with this and... His great-nephew, Alan Grant, says three generations of his family have since lived with the torment of not knowing what happened to their Billy. What were some of the things that the family wanted to know. They just wanted to know where he was. They had no known grave. They had nowhere to go in the morning. Finding men like Billy Bowes is what drives John Basarin and Lambus in Glezos. Well, I'm in trouble. Two otherwise unlikely pals. That'll, that looks very good, actually. One's a lawn bowl loving Greek Australian. Oh! Well the other? In the sanctuary, there is a sunken marble 
a delightful Turkish Australian who regularly volunteers at Melbourne's Shrine of Remembrance. They advance open ground, 600 yards or more of open flat ground, there's absolutely no chance at all. Yeah. Their bond is their outrage at what happened to the Australians at Krithia. The missing of Krithia are calling us. And an overwhelming desire to find out why most of the diggers who yeah. died in the battle were never accounted for. What we're looking for is the creek at yeah. a dip in the ground. Indeed, indeed. They've spent the last four years going through official and unofficial records, and now they have the answer. It is a perfect fit to the documentation we've seen. Based on uh, the figures, the number of killed, the missing, but the documentation is very strong. Makes my hair stand up, actually, that there's a calling that, you know, they're saying, come and find us. Lambus in Glezos has impressive form when it comes to finding our war dead. Uh, here's a township of Fromel, and the square of interest is square 17. In 2008, he discovered the remains of 250 missing Australian soldiers, casualties of the equally costly Battle of Fromel on the Western Front. Subsequently, those diggers were exhumed more than half have been identified and now properly laid to rest by their families. How confident are you that the information here yeah. is as good as it was in Fromel? I'm confident. You've had success before, are you willing to put your name on the line again? Reputation is not a factor. The work is too important to seek any sort of vindication. Uh, I'm very comfortable with my motivation in doing this. I believe that we have that obligation to find and recover our war dead. How many times have you been here, John? Uh, probably 12 or 13 times. The names of the Anzacs who died in the Battle of Krithia and whose bodies were never found have been carved into a British memorial at the very tip of the Gallipoli Peninsula. For Lambus and John, this is vital information. Who they're looking for? 248 mostly Victorian men from the 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th battalions. And this is the first clue, isn't it? Yes. 248 missing Australian soldiers. Where it says not on graves, I think that no longer holds true because we believe we know where they are. Can you see Bland and Ferguson? With the names of the dead, Lambus and John's detective work took them to diaries written by survivors of the battle. So through here. They, uh, and two stood out. And that night we tried to bury some of our dead. A party of us put 57 in one grave. The first by highly decorated soldier Captain Percy Lay, the second by Private Herbert Lloyd. He says, a burial party went out and buried 86 in one grave. Lay tells us clearly that under the cover of darkness they went out and brought in the bodies and he and his team buried 57 in one grave. Lloyd accounts for another 86, he and his team. So under darkness they bring in the dead and the wounded. The diaries confirm there was no time for proper burials. In the chaos of the fighting, the battlefield had to be cleared and at least 143 of the dead soldiers were buried in two hastily dug mass graves. Geez, young. Yeah, yeah. In all likelihood, one of those men is Lance Corporal Billy Bowes. The family were never at peace, and they're such a close family, and he would never be at peace as a result of that. Just by not having a grave, causes that much anxiety. A massive anxiety to them, yeah. Throughout their whole lives? Throughout their whole lives. This family, the Bowes family, have spent a lot of life thinking about Billy Bowes, yep. A hundred years on, there's still evidence of the Battle of Krithia. This is a communication set connecting two or more major trench lines. Supply trenches which were used to evacuate the dead and wounded. I can also almost imagine people falling like flies. How many bodies do you think were carried along here? Must be in hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah, yep. 
luck comes out. These trenches led to the only ground around here that provided any cover. So, so far, is this matching your research? Oh, yes. And, uh, and it's where John and Lambus say the Australian soldiers must have been buried. And we come now to the dip in the ground, which provides the line of sight cover uh, for the necessary work of burial. The grave site is about 20 metres square in a slight gully near the creek. It's where a medical post was set up to treat casualties during the battle. No documentation has been found to indicate that they were ever recovered. So the soldiers, the Australian soldiers who were buried here, are still here. Standing here, it's a peculiar feeling knowing there could be the remains of 143 diggers, young men who gave their lives for Australia barely a metre below us. It's not just about the soldiers who went away to war and remain in foreign fields in anonymous dirt. It's also about the families back home who had to endure it. And uh, there's every opportunity now that we can recover this site and restore some closure, give some closure to those families back in uh, Australia. After Lambus's success locating the graves in Fromell, you'd think the government would be keen to act quickly on another potential discovery. But when he told them about Krithia three years ago, they ignored him. But last December, Lambus and John finally received an email which said, we will not consider any ground search unless we are certain of finding remains. A classic bureaucratic brush off. I think he's proved that he knows what he's talking about. He's, he's a charming, quiet steamroller and he'll keep going until he gets there because he's not driven by glory or money or any other motive other than to make sure that these missing diggers get a proper burial and that, if possible, that they can actually be identified. But there is that argument that the soldiers are at peace and the entire peninsula is a cemetery uh, for the war dead. That's true, but surely wherever we send our troops and put them in harm's way, if they die, if they pay the sacrifice that we've asked them to pay as a nation, it's, it's incumbent on us to go back there and if we know where they are, to go and find them and give them a proper burial. Yeah. 8 Battalion, Lancashire and Lancaster. Oh, look, that's a Having spent time with John and Lambus, there's no doubt they'll ever give up their quest to recover the missing Anzacs. How many dead? And no amount of government obfuscation will stop them. Are you guys tired of each other's company yet? Not yet. <laughs> we have our moments, but we do, we do a good job, don't we? It's a solid team, a solid team. And now, it all goes back to the original question the moral dilemma, if you will, should you actively seek your war dead? I believe we should. I believe we have the obligation to investigate that ground, confirm that ground, and recover that ground. Give these soldiers their dignity and, hopefully, their identity. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9Now app.